Rub up your engines! Here comes the big question. Would you buy a car with 300,000 miles on? Well, this guy did. Now he's got 340,000 miles. It's still going good because it's a Honda. The bumper repainted if he wanted, but he drove all over the place. Kind of see Philadelphia and back. It's not burning oil. He's put 40,000 miles. Now he bought these alloy wheels because this was the lower end one, had the steel wheels, but he got the set of four for a hundred bucks in the junkyard. Who can argue that? And how come it's still going after 340,000 miles with the original engine or tranny? Well, let's look under the hood. The Honda four cylinder engine, it's a reasonable size. It's 1.8 liters, but it is not GDI. It is not turbocharged. It's a plain engine. They can run virtually forever if you change the oil. Now, the thing about Hondas, especially the Civic side, they make so many and they sell so many, people modify them so much, you can do whatever you want with them for a very little amount of money. Like, you got those four wheels. Hey, 100 bucks for all four in a junkyard. There's tons of these around. You don't have to spend a fortune buying super expensive parts because there's so many of them in junkyards. Let's say your transmission went out. This one has a little bit of funkiness when it's going slow, five speeds it doesn't. 340,000 miles, you'd shift a little funky too, but it still goes down the road. But let's say it went out, he could find a used transmission in the junkyard and put it in. This one's still going at 340, so even if he found one with 200, it'd probably still be working okay. Hey, I mean, as you can see, the vehicle itself has held up quite well for all that mileage and age. And of course, he's got one up on most people because he's now living in Tennessee now instead of Pennsylvania. So he bypasses all that crap of the state inspection and emissions inspection. Pennsylvania is a relatively stiff one. You can only have such a big crack in a windshield. You can't have a bunch of rusted out panels. Tennessee, they don't do any kind of inspections. Emissions, safety, nothing. You just pay every year to register it on the road. That's it. So he's in the right state for an old car let's say you buy one of these and then you get the inefficient catalytic converter code. It costs a lot of money to replace the cats. And if you do have a cat, it's generally gone bad because the engine burns oil or something's going on and that ruins the cat. So if you put a new cat on next year, the same thing will happen. It'll ruin that cat. Here, they don't inspect them for any of that stuff. So nobody cares. And the owner even said it has the inefficient cat code. We're going to scan and look at it, but he's in Tennessee now. So sayonara state inspection. It's been proven that most state inspections are just a money grabbing device for the state so they can make money. And then when I was in Texas, they did all the emissions stuff in Houston. And I'd ask guys, why do you want to inspect cars? It's a boring job. They said, oh, we make lots of money. We fail them, then we make a bunch of money fixing them, even though they run okay, but we can do it because they have to get it. So the lights are off so you can get your car registered for the road. It's basically a license to steal. A lot of states in the United States are getting rid of those things now for that very same reason. 99% of car wrecks are caused by driver not paying attention, not by the vehicle itself breaking. So, Hey, I'm all for people getting rid of that stuff. It's a lot of hooey anyway. Now we'll take a look inside before we hook everything up. And, hey, this is the advantage of not getting leather seats. These plain old seats, 340,000 miles. They're still, you know, maybe a little burn here from some smoker, but they're still in really good shape. And the back seats, they're in even better shape. Now, these are men Canada. They do a pretty good job. Sounds pretty solid. Doesn't sound clunky. And we can see. The dash is still good. It's not cracked. He obviously added this. <laughs> that did not come with the original car. But look, it fits good. That's why I tell people, there's so much aftermarket stuff for Hondas. Make your head spin. You can modernize your car without emptying your wallet. <laughs> hey, that's the way to go. And of course, old, great. No electric handbrake. A regular one that'll last forever, right? And it even came with donuts on the side. Now, of course, this didn't come with a backup camera, but he hooked one up. Look, it's beautiful, big, gigantic, better than most modern cars. This whole setup cost him 150 bucks. That's why people like buying these Hondas. You know, it's old, still got a pretty fast computer on it. Read the VIN already. Now it's decoding the VIN. So we got a USA Civic 2008. Do an auto scan. Well, it's working away. It's got a nice setup. And they're economy cars, but still, look. They got a nice tack in the front. Pedometer up there. Fuel temperature gauge. Hey, and as you can see, 
He's not lying. It has 340,477 miles on it. So they can still do a basic topology scan. So here we go. While it's doing that, we'll look around. Everything's still in pretty good shape, really, for all that mileage. That's Honda. So, of course, all the windows and everything are still working on it. He did have to spend 1500 to have the AC done. He couldn't do the AC himself. He did all the other stuff, struts, brakes himself, but he had an AC guy fix the AC. The compressors are somewhat weak on these. You can see for Honda, it's got a lot of codes, 15, but right away, I'm looking at them. 11 of them are the tire pressure monitoring system. Well, he's got the new alloy wheels instead of steel ones. He doesn't even have TPMS sensors in them, so that we don't even care about. We'll look at the PCM, and he already said that's got the inefficient cat code, so that's probably what's going to pop up. There it is. We really don't care. So it's inefficient. It runs good. If you really had a bad cat, it would run crappy, and you can see the temperature gauge is a little under halfway. It's just sitting there now. The temperature gauge would run towards the hot, and you don't be able to go a certain speed like 55 miles an hour, not any faster, then you'd have to replace the cat. I have had people drive with inefficient cat coats for years, five years, sometimes 10 years. As long as you don't live in an emissions control state, it doesn't really do anything. Like I say, if it starts running bad, yeah, then you have to. But these things can run at 92% efficiency and run perfectly fine, but they'll keep tripping the code. And he just told me if he switches to a more expensive gas like Shell Super Unleaded, it goes away. That shows that some gases burn more efficiently than others. <laughs> but it runs okay, so who really cares? Now, the other codes, like I say, they're not much. We're not even going to care. Multiplex integrated control unit. Yeah, that's because he's got this on, and it doesn't mesh with the other system. The airbag system. Me, I would never trust airbags in a car that's this old anyways. I would use my seat belts. We'll see what that code is. Open or short to ground the passenger airbag cutoff indicator. So, who cares? Now, interesting enough, he took it in for the recall for those stupid Takata airbags. Now the light comes on. <laughs> this is what I'm telling you. These guys at dealerships, they don't know what the heck they're doing half the time. Now, he didn't put this crazy rear view mirror on. It came that way, but you do get a wide view. Distorted up might be. You can see how it's kind of wobbles when you look at it. What is an ABS system? Modulator control unit initial. I see low voltage. Well, the modulators often go bad on these Hondas. It costs a fortune. It's fail safe. It goes back to non ABS normal braking. It's a small car, easy to stop if you know how to drive. If you don't, hey, you shouldn't be driving a car anyway. <laughs> Let's start her up. We'll look at some live data. Go to the main live data on the PCM. Remember, black is good, red is bad. Mav sense is normal. Throttle data is all good. This thing, yes, has what? 340,000 miles on it. Get the air fuel lambda. What? That's perfect. 0 0.99. Ooh, it's almost perfect. That's insane. That is perfect. Then it's off just a tiny bit. For that kind of mileage, it's amazing. Alternator's putting out good voltage. Fan controls are good. Typical Honda. No misfires, even though it's got 340,000 miles on it. Let's look at some automatic transmission live data. See, everything's normal here. Temperature's normal. And as you can see, all the data is black. It's good. So let's have a bite of a donut and get going. First thing I notice. 340,000 miles. It doesn't shake at all. It's still smooth. I'm really, I couldn't even feel that chip. It's smooth as can be. If I push it, yeah. Get a little jiggle in here and there with that kind of mileage. Yeah, the power window's doing that little jiggle up and down because it's old and you know they'll stick if you don't hold it long enough you got to be tricky with these old windows he did put struts and shocks on himself so it handles quite well if you would have blindfolded me and stuck me in his car i would have no idea this thing's got 340,000 miles on it ac is nice and cold though he had to spend 1500 bucks on that you can always drive him without ac now at least this thing being this old has an actual automatic transmission this isn't a cvt so even though it's a 1.8 liter engine not turbo it should still have a decent amount of acceleration not a race car no but decent acceleration and here we go wow it takes off pretty good smooth shift and under full load you can't argue that like i say you'd never know this thing has 340,000 miles on on to make great engines. That's been a pretty reliable automatic transmission too. Can't get used to that wonky wide mirror though. That's just bizarre. Well, I for one, I would have no qualms about getting in this car and driving to California and back. As long as I was just visiting, I'd never want to live there. They have too many taxes. There's a nice turning radius. Turns around real fast too. I really like the tachometer right in front of you. And the speedometer on the top makes it really racy looking. Of course, you'd really want a manual transmission.
transformation. If you wanted to do some serious zipping around. And it might be a small car, but hey, it doesn't have much road noise for all the mileage that it has on it. Do you think I can really hear the tires rolling down the road? Till corners really smoothly, the tires aren't squealing. Guess he wasn't crazy buying this thing with 300,000 miles on it. So there you have it. He certainly didn't get ripped off buying a car with 300,000 miles. Yes, it's a Honda Civic and an older one when they really made them bulletproof. I can just about guarantee you the modern ones that have 1.5 or smaller turbos with CVT transmissions, one, they're not as fun to drive. This is a regular automatic and it's still in excellent shape. The CVTs right out of the factory floor as far as I'm concerned are garbage. I don't like them. You lose acceleration, you lose the fun of driving a Honda. They're even more fun with a manual but Americans don't drive manuals. So you can't buy one of these with an automatic. They're all CVTs now. If you're looking for something like this, don't let the mileage scare you away. Just the price. He paid $2,300 for it 40,000 miles ago. So if you're looking for something that lasts a long time, get an older Honda. <laughs> Maybe put a little money in it, but hey, these things can run forever. And the pH de resistance is, this is a Jersey car. And it's got a little rust on a quarter panel back there, but that's it. It's still really solid. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.